The National Library retains records on a number of attempts to popularize Kuen Chu among the common people several hundred years ago. Notes and Records is a Kuen Chu book printed in the 14th year of the reign of Dao Wang, although it quite possibly appeared in its first edition somewhat earlier, probably in the reign of Chen Long. This book provides detailed descriptions of no less than 66 highlights, covering scripts, costumes, and facial makeup. And on the margin of each page, beside the music notation and dialogue, are notes on acting technique and facial expression. Notes and Records, besides being a collection of Kuen Chu scripts, records the experiences of performers, both on stage and during rehearsals. The appearance of Kuen Chu highlights marked a peak in Kuen Chu, and credit for this should be ascribed to the people who pioneered this approach to popularizing the genre. After Kuen Chu became a theatrical form on stage, over time, roles fell into certain categories, and this was reflected in both script writing and acting. By the time highlights appeared, there were five rigid categories into which all characters fell. The young male, young female, painted face role, comic role, and middle-aged male role. Under these five, a further 20 subcategories evolved. The subcategories, known as Jia Men, distinguish the roles by gender, age, social status, and personality, and they provide more leeway for performers to display their skills. Each category had its own costumes and painted faces, and some even had standardized makeup patterns. In other words, a villain or a hero was identifiable by the pattern on his face. The categorization of the characters led to the designs of the facial makeup being standardized. The use of standardized designs made it easier for audiences to understand the various roles. The categories did not only apply to roles on stage, but also the standard procedures by which a drama was to be conducted. <laughs> The term standardization is highly important in Kuen Chu. On stage, a set of standard procedures determines everything, the singing, dancing, and postures. Interestingly, it is the same with other moves, whether it be opening or closing a door, or mounting and dismounting a horse. All actions are standardized in symbolic moves. There are also standardized moves for expressing all manner of feelings, even those that one might consider very difficult to express. 
起起又起来，皮毛还没闭呀！哎呀，相公好，哎，相公好，相公好，哎呀！表演的体系，表演的城市，唱念做表，是吧？舞台的那个结构的体系，一桌二椅，是吧？那穿的衣服的体系，是吧？穿什么衣服？唱念更不用说了，那些东西，它成了整个中国戏曲的一笔财富和一种规范。Shui Xiao, which is swinging long white silk sleeves, is a highly symbolic and highly expressive action in Kuen Chu acting. And after the move was standardized in Kuen Chu, it began to appear in other opera forms. In the early years of Kuen Chu highlights, performers even came up with different styles of sleeve swinging, each quite different from the other, each conveying different feelings and moods required by the role. Swinging sleeves. Became a skill regarded as essential for every performer. The way Kuen Chu is performed is closely related to the stage on which it is performed. Although the numerous stages seen in cities and in the countryside may differ in terms of size and exterior appearance, they are all square in shape and they open to the audience from three sides. This design does provide a wider space for performers, but it limits the use of stage props, and thus it forces the performers. To focus on costumes, facial makeup, and of course, acting. In this highlight from the Peony Pavilion called Park Visit, Zhang Jiqing plays the heroine Lady Du. Using a variety of postures and moves while singing and chanting, she reveals the feelings of the heroine down to the finest detail. The feelings of a young lady from a rich family confined to a boudoir who longs for love and who resents the fact that spring is fast disappearing. In another classical highlight, desperate run at night in the wilderness, the hero Lin Chong undertakes a hurried journey on his own at night. But the mountain, river, and village he passes in the wilderness are shown not through props or backdrops, but through moves and gestures that create a vivid depiction of the journey. A Kuen Chu performer presents a role through singing, chanting, postures, and acrobatic moves to reveal the inner feelings of the character and thus tell the story. Among opera singers, there is a saying: the most challenging role for a male actor is that of Lin Chong in *A Desperate Run at Night in the Wilderness*. This is because it requires the highest skills in every regard. This target is very difficult to manipulate. Like we see, he uses a hammer. He is very strong. 你打眼一看，它没什么特殊的东西，但是你如果静下心来，慢慢的品味咀嚼，来呃探求，来感受它中间的蕴含的时候，你就会越悟越多。昆曲就是这么一种东西。Through the presentation of highlights refined over and over again. Kuen Chu evolved into a theatrical form, incorporating singing, dancing, and chanting. 
At the beginning of the last century, opera theorist Qi Ruxian summed up the features of Chinese opera genres when he wrote, no sound is uttered without singing, and no move is executed without dancing. In the way Kuen Chu brings singing and dancing together, Kuen Chu goes far beyond any other form. Born out of traditional Chinese culture, Kuen Chu emphasizes a spiritual portrayal, much as in traditional Chinese painting. In theory, Kuen Chu shares many similarities with Chinese painting, through a physical approach to a spiritual portrayal, with the latter as the objective. Here, the physical approach means a sketchy and brief illustration. Chinese Kuen Chu is a spiritual treasure of the Chinese people passed down from their ancestors. It is highly national and cultural, but it is also a shining gem in the cultural archives of the world, a wealth to be shared by all the world's people. Kuen Chu opera is a spiritual treasure of the Chinese people that has been passed down from our ancestors. In its nature, it is very Chinese, yet it is also a gem of world civilization. Because of Kuen Chu's unique position as the ancestor of all other opera forms in China, it was naturally a first choice for inclusion on UNESCO's list of the world's intangible cultural heritage. In our next episode, we'll discover more about how Quinch Opera nurtured the various other forms of traditional opera in China. Please join us then. And thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Qi Xiaojun from CCTV International. See you next time.